Hey, this is Steven from Legit PC, and uh, today we're going to do a little quarter review of uh, quarter three of 2013. So uh, today we're going to talk uh, about what I think were the best games of quarter three of 2013. And I know this video is a little late. We're coming up to the end of quarter four, and I'll definitely have some uh, videos for that. So now I'm going to do this a little more of a graphical overlay rather than just live video of me talking about it. Probably be a lot easier for you guys to recall which games I'm talking about and which order I say that they are. So now I'm going to have all the games in order from what I think were the best down. And I'll also talk about the games and what I remember them from playing them and reviewing them. So first we have uh, just laying out here. Let me name off some of the games I have laid out. This is not in place order. When it transitions, that will be in place order, and that's what we're going to be going off of. So first we have Splinter Cell Blacklist, then we got Rome 2, Total War Rome 2, Arma 3, Payday 2, Saints Row 4, Lost Planet 3, and the Bureau XCOM Declassified. Now um, we're going to go ahead and transition into what I think is the best uh, games of this year, and then I'll definitely talk about it further from there. So we're going to flip them now. And now you see what I think were the best games, starting from the first row from the left to the right, and then continuing from the left to the right on the bottom. So first place, I believe Splinter Cell Blacklist. Second place, Total War Rome 2. Third place, Payday 2. Fourth place, Arma 3. Um, uh, fifth place, uh, The Bureau XCOM Declassified. Sixth place, Lost Planet 3. Seventh place, Saints Row 4. Alright, so now I'm going to talk about why I uh, line these up as these are the, the positions that these games go in uh, in quarter three. Number one, so why does Splinter Cell Blacklist number one? It is an excellent, excellent game. Hopefully it ushers a new um, type of mode for these games coming up, where it's the first person against third person, really cool multiplayer. It had a valuable multiplayer and a great single player. Lots of guns, lots of, lots of customization, lots of tweaking your character to get exactly what you want, as well as the game modes in multiplayer, where you could have, you know, um, spies versus mercs, or you could have a team of mix, spies and mercs. It, it's, it's really a great, great experience. I really liked it. Um, I, I'm going to keep it installed because I like playing it. I love the Splinter Cell series. It's one of my early series that I got into when I started gaming PC. So, you know, I got a special place for that. But even if you don't, it's a great game to get. And you have, if you haven't played it, I would definitely get it now. Even though it's, you know, it came out back then, I would still get it. It's definitely got that playthrough ability value. Okay, uh, number two, we have Rome, uh, Total War Rome 2. Total War Rome 2 came out of nowhere. I didn't think it was going to be that great from my day one. And then when I went through and played it, I realized that there is a lot of gameplay available there and a lot of replayability value. You could put at least you know 50 to 100 hours in just into single player against the AI. And it has a story behind it and uh, has definitely some difficulty. It definitely has difficulty. And then after you do that, then you start playing multiplayer with people online. Next thing you know, you have a game you can play forever until the next one comes out. And uh, there was no real glitches or anything like that. Everything seemed pretty balanced. Each uh, each race had different units. I mean, it's a, it's really really cool. And there, it was populated. It was a, the game was populated in multiplayer. There was populated people there, and, and it's got. Uh, but it does have that curve for beginners that want to get into the game. It's got a pretty intensive uh, high uh, slope as far as what's coming up. Uh, in order to get into a game like uh, the multiplayer of that game. Okay, so Payday 2 and Arma were pretty close. Uh, Payday 2, um, pretty weak launch. Um, it was kind of glitchy. There was only like six maps, you know, for like, a, I think it was like a $20 game or whatever. And uh, I thought there was going to be at least 20 maps, but there was only six. Now they're releasing stuff. Uh, I don't know if it's on DLC. I, I think it's for free. They're they're updating and all the maps coming up in the updates. But uh, the reason why I put it as number three is that um, the company, uh, you know, this game was published by Five Hundred Five Games. I can't remember what the. I think it was Seabreeze, Starbreeze, Seabreeze, something like that. Seabreeze Studios that produced this. They are listening to their uh, community and they're tweaking the game for that and that is why it got the third place was because of the devs 
you know, trying to fix their mistakes and listening to the community, adding what they, adding what they, um, what the community wanted and fixing the things that, you know, the community wanted to go more towards. So now the close, uh, the close fourth is Arma 3. Now it's a great, great army simulator, but it's, you know, it's got its glitches and its bugs and, you know, it, it, it's got, for me, it's worth more for me for than Payday 2, because Payday 2, I could be interested in making mods for it. So, Arma 3, in my opinion, would be third. But in a gamer's pr opinion, I would have Arma, th Arma 3 fourth. Um, only reason why it's even up that high. Otherwise, if, I was, if it was just a player, it would probably be way fa farther back. You don't like it, that's it. You don't play anymore. But there are those mods that you could get for the game that would up the playability value if you're not into that military uh, simulator then you could have something like DayZ or other mo other large mods that come to Arma 3 that you could just install and play it and it was a great update from the last one but the real worth of it is in its gaming community and the way that the mod the the way that the map modders and game modders mod off of all that solid military simulator into something really cool Especially how um, the engine now ha uh, has the ability to have a huge map size. Really brings out a lot of options. So that's why it's fourth. Um, the Bureau is uh, number five. Uh, Bureau was was spot on. Um, I thought that it would really, that it was great. It's, it's one of those games where like you wish that there was a multiplayer. The campaign and the engine were great. Um, I didn't see any real bugs, and I liked the theme of it, and as well as the style, and the audio was great, the voiceover was great, the graphics, particle emitters, physics, had all that stuff in there. Uh, it was a great, great game. I really enjoyed playing it. I think it was an Unreal Engine modified into DirectX 11, which is a good deal. You know, not just DirectX 9, has Tesla, had uh, physics as well as uh, cloth physics which is really cool, and the particle emitters are absolutely superb. Game ran great. Absolutely perfect. Wish there was a multiplayer. Would have brought that game up, you know, so much. Uh, Lost Planet 3 had the campaign and the multiplayer, but the multiplayer had, um... It just seemed like the devs didn't really care too much about it, as well as Cop Capcom said that, it really, that it, uh, the numbers were way under what they expected, so they got a little discouraged, kind of uh, dropped it. But uh, the multiplayer had um, had hackers in it and, and um, glitchers and stuff like that. So it kind of killed the multiplayer experience. You know, after the game's been out for one or two months, um, probably about one and a half, uh, there was already hackers and they were shooting you through walls and you can't really do anything. You know, there'll be spawn camping, the spawns don't flip or anything like that. It just kind of killed the experience. Uh, and the single player was all right. Some parts of it were pretty broken. So that's why it's it's where it is, but uh, Saints Row Four uh, Saints Row Four for me just didn't really do it. And Saints Row Four is number seven, last place. Um, I thought that the powers were kind of weird, and that it had stuff that they could have taken out and focused more on the gameplay. The only, it's a good game, but the reason why I put it seventh is it shouldn't have been a standalone. It should have been DLC expansion on the third game. Would have really really brought up the value of that game and would have really helped uh, bring it to um, a bigger level because you buy one game and then you buy you know 30 or whatever dollar DLC and it would have uh, definitely kept all the scrutiny off of it than having it as a standalone you know you're paying whatever it was 60 bucks on this game and if it's not good then you spend 60, 60 bucks now if you bought the third and then it was just an expansion, you pay $30 for a DLC or whatever, then then it would have been different. Then I would have definitely had that up there, or I don't know if I would have put it on the list if it was a DLC and expanded on the previous game, but it did have, you know, graphics improvements, uh, gameplay improvements, mechanic improvements, but it just kind of fell short, you know, the, they, they shot the plot way too far, and now I don't know they're, if they're going to be able to reel back in the the fans if they want to create a fifth so i think they just kind of overshot it with this one they, they just shot the plot way too far out there and might not be able to recover from that one so it might be done after that so yeah so this has been quarter three and uh this is quarter three of 2013 uh we have the 
the holiday season come up coming up here in quarter four and we have a couple good games games already got into we only have a couple more until uh i'm gonna be ready to do um, the quarter four review and then we have the new year and then it's going to be 2014 and we have plenty of games coming up really hot games coming up uh next year which i'm going to be talking about in an upcoming live stream talking about the holiday games um, which would probably be like a week from now, th this week, uh, this next weekend, and it's going to be great. So, uh, yeah, so this is my order. Um, let me, uh, these are only the games that I played. So these are only the games I played during that quarter. That's why I have here. Um, of course, there's other games that come by. Let me know about other games that you think or your order that you would have had these in if you did play them and you have your opinion. Go ahead and put it down in the comments. I'd really appreciate it, and other people, you know, would, really bring up a good discussion and uh, bring some things to my attention of what you guys would like to see more of. Anyways, uh, this has been Steven from Legit PC, and this is my quarter three review of 2013. Let me know what you think of this new visual format. Probably a lot easier to follow than uh, than just live uh, watching me you know, talk and commentary and trying to follow while I'm speaking. Um, it should be a lot better. And uh, yeah, so if you like my videos, please subscribe for other videos like it. And stay tuned, quarter four, 2013, as well as uh, my live stream, um, previewing what's going to happen, uh, uh, those games, as well as what's going to happen uh, next uh, next year. So thanks for watching, and take it easy.